Tokyo. It didn't seem like long ago when I was driving along Shibuya Crossing dressed like this in a go-kart. Now I'm in town again, but this time for a Panasonic event with seemingly the wrong gear. So let's have a look at the gear. So we've got the Panasonic S5. Another S5. S5. Kit lens. He looks familiar. It's <laughs> doing some kind of a suicide dive as well. <laughs> Panny. S oh, and this is what I have brought to a Panasonic event. And I'm back in Shibuya, just not dressed as that famous fictional jumping Italian plumber. Panasonic S5, there's so much to love about it. It's small, it's lightweight, it's got great colours, and the stabilisation is possibly the best. No, actually, it is the best for any full-frame mirrorless camera. But the focus, it keeps coming back to, well, the focus. But now, we've got the S5 II, and there's a lot to be excited about. Oh, oh, oh yes. Well, why the excitement? Because, check this out, phase detection, autofocus. Finally! I mean, that's crazy, amazing. Not just for S5, but for Panasonic. Whew, you should have seen the press event. We did it! There was hollering, there's screaming, there's shouting. Some people even wear their pants. But it's all right, Locke had a change of underwear with him, so all good. But before we talk about the juicy bits of this camera, let's unpeel some of the more standard bits. The body of the camera, it's pretty much the same. I mean, if you look at it, similar kind of shape, similar kind of weight-ish. It looks and feels very similar to before. But sometimes it's the stuff that you can't see and, well, you can't quite see that's new. First of all, it's the EVF, 3.6 million dot, uh, 0.78 times, so slightly more magnification and more pixels. So therefore, when I say similar shape, similar size, that hump has got more humpy, but that's not just because of the EVF, because underneath there is a fan. Yep, so the air goes in there, and then on either side of the hump, Hot air comes out. Both sides. Venting hot air, that's cool. That hump is more prominent, yes, but you could look at it this way. It doesn't add unnecessary bulk to the thickness of the main body of the camera. Okay, well, even S1H, yeah. it's like it, it's a lot thicker here. But it's quite neat, it's quite neatly done. And it doesn't impact on the, the dust and weather resistance. It definitely survived a couple of hours of not so desirable weather. <laughs> It is atrocious. It's like a storm. It's like a storm out here, on top of a hill. It's rainy, it's wet, it's miserable. It's not good weather. It's not good weather. It's not good. I'm really shitty. Look at that. So therefore, well, there's no limitation on record time, and that is up to 40 degrees C. You do the calculations to degrees Fahrenheit. I don't, I don't know what the calculations is. If you want to babyfy it, it's a baby S1H. In some ways it's more than the S1H because it's got phase detection autofocus. The S1H doesn't have that. The focus should be incredible. I mean this phase detection autofocus could be that missing piece of the puzzle to make it a complete picture. My preference was to not use the S5 for photos. With the new focusing system, that can change things quite drastically with the S5 II. Oh, that's quite quick there, that's quite quick to focus. But I, I'm loving this. I, this is all AFC. I'm using AFC. I'm using AFS just to, you know, just test it for stills on people walking, walking by. See what it's like. I've got the eye, face, AF on. First few photos in and focus is feeling good, feeling lively and seemingly reliable so far for a bit of street photography and a sneaky selfie too. But we had a few more days in Japan, so why not test out its hybridness a bit more? Well, I might take some photos. It does also take photos, let's what? not forget. I know, it's crazy. So at least it does keep the settings for, for the stills mode and the video mode separate. There we are. This is a um, wish for the newborn baby, wish for Korea, and then the Chinese is always wish for a 
get which and get which this, this guy has just put his name and he's put New York to Japan 2022 <laughs> you know I like the colors look really great for stills as well they look fantastic for image quality there's no need to think about how it is new compared to the s5 because it still has a 24 megapixel sensor without the low pass filter it's more about how it has been improved in use as a camera that will make it better for stills this is it this is the social media moment this is the this is the instagram moment this is the the temple where the lucky cat originated from the Manaki Neko. So we got all these different sizes here. You got look at that, <laughs> those tiny ones, they're so cute. The S5 II viewfinder, not so cute. The larger, more detailed finder is nice and non-laggy. Specs-wise, with a 3.68 million dot and 0.78 times magnification, it's the same as Sony's slightly more expensive A7 IV viewfinder. It's quite nice, it's all white and red, yeah. black. And then in the background, you got, got all those autumn colors. That looks so Very nice. Cool. It's just that contrast. Let's try aperture effect on. Curse <laughs> everywhere. I've got like 270 shots. I think there's, I mean, it's, it's really cool. And just the light, it keeps changing the light. And then of course the colors of the leaves in the background. But then it gets to the point where it's like, okay, I, I think I've catted out. I'm lucky catted out. <laughs> So, on to the next location for a bit of vlogging and more photo taking, but one thing noticeably different than the S5 is that the battery doesn't last as long. All those cat photos and a tiny bit of video taking at the temple, and the first battery is pooped. Time for a battery change. Oh, it's good then, we're here, it's just cold. <laughs> and we're here in Nakano, a great place if you want to come look at secondhand watches, cameras, and toys. Old toys. Old toys, yes, it sounds like fun. Let's go! The S5 II feels a lot more like a hybrid. Sure, previous Panasonic's were hybrid, but I really enjoy using this, using autofocus for stills, even though Locks Carrier's AF wasn't waking up here. That's the Hamburger, isn't it? Okay, time for vlogging, but one useful thing is that you can burn in the LUTs now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try burning in the LUTs. I'm, I'm, I've been shooting log, but uh, I thought I'd, I'd try and shoot it, try it with the, because this is a new feature where you can burn in the LUT. Uh, standard? Well, how many you said? You've got 10 options here. You can put in 10 different LUTs. It's already got three. It's got Vlog 709 and Aggressive 709, so that will get angry at you in a minute. And the nicest, very polite stuff, which is, I'll choose that because it's very appropriate for Tokyo. Warning, here comes the nerdy vloggy bits. If you don't want to watch this, then skip to the next chapter. It's just, just all these very, very niche specialist stores. It's cool. I don't think I'll buy any of these. I thought it might be well, interesting. It's cool to look at. It's yeah. Like, it's like going to a museum. Was there a white alien? What on earth? <laughs> this is a snake. Uh, lock. The snake isn't the weird bit. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> Too many great stuff. Be in a shop for that. I don't even know what are these cartoons I've ever seen. <laughs> I don't know if I want any of it, but it's just something for any kind of... They're, they're, they're trying to cover, cover every kind of possibility of craving. Well, unless there's something cute, not an ice maker. Uh, as long as you don't actually deep fry a cat's head. There's a lot of all, all sorts of random... Small red wing boots, you've got a Nescafe gold blend. Retro vending machine. Oh, no, and oh, what's... hang on. This is some underwear, right? Yeah. Yeah. Some people even wear their pants. But it's alright, Locke had a change of underwear with him, so... All good. Oh, well, look at this suspicious smell of women. Can they go? Have the Sonic make everything from bikes to games consoles. Is that Nintendo? Is it yeah, that play with your Nintendo? That's for the Famicom. But that then, these kind of car cases keep a different color. 
Black Lake Super Nintendo is all grey. But these are Hang different colour. Hang on a minute. <laughs> a game on how to get fat. And that light gun. Oh, always wanted a super scoop. It's sending a tingling down my spine, this place. It's wonderful. It's brilliant. And we haven't even seen the cameras yet. <laughs> I mean, th this Marie Kondo would approve of this. It sparks joy, much joy within me. And I think for you as well, isn't it? Yeah, so much. You're enjoying this. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> it's like I'm having too much food. I was like, oh my God, it's, it's too much. Suddenly it gives me an idea to get a uh, Comica Fiat 500 of my <laughs> yeah. color. Yeah, you totally. That's cost a little bit. And there's a pickup truck. That must be a super rare one. They, they even gave it its own parking spot. Yeah. <laughs> Separate parking spot. Okay, I think we should um, not get a haircut from this guy, but I think we should not get too carried away with the nerdy, geeky stuff and do some proper tests, sort of. I, I don't know any about this, but I just like this. That's so funky. You know, face detection is working on it. Not the prettiest of faces, but it still works. What about this one? No, in no, those. Or this one. Maybe you turn on a human and animal. Human and animal. No. Yeah. Godzilla villain uh, detection mode. Oh. I don't even know if it's from Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It looks like it could be. Thomas transforms into a decapitated Thomas robot thing. And this uh oh, and a the back as well. Motor driven as well. Oh. Automatic. Uh, after looking at that, I don't think I really want cauliflower again. It kind of reminds me of it. Okay, that's enough because my second and last battery is running out of power and it's time to take some more photos. We spent so long inside Nakano Broadway that it's now dark, but it's a good time to take some low light test shots. Your focus is right, I think, for stills in this kind of low light, flashing lights everywhere, low light. Wait, she wasn't even in the light there. She was kind of in the shadow, uh, a bright light on her bicycle. Quick enough. Quick enough, but I'd say that sometimes it didn't pick up on the faces when people had masks on. And that, unfortunately, was it for my battery. But I went out another day for some more low light testing. Now, I've been to this place before, with different cameras, and I know that with slower focusing systems, you can be left squeezing the shutter button, struggling with some confused AFAF. The biggest challenge actually is the mask and face detection, so I've just switched it to human, it work, and it works quite well. It is quite quick like that. We do a jump. Here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> Yours yeah, pretty good. So same megapixels as the S5, it's got dual base ISO just with a different processor. But still, I was pleasantly surprised how good the low light images look. Just now I was waiting for the, you know, it's kind of, the lights were staying on for a little bit and then going off. I thought I'd try and focus on those little brief moments of light switching on in it. Seem to focus in between. Plus the stabilization really helps to create some poorly lit images that look supremely clean. With that stabilization, some stonkingly slow shutter speeds are possible. But although the amount of stop that you benefit from with the stabilization are the same as the old S5, Panasonic say that it is 200% better. I don't know how it's measured and what it's based on, but I guess what people really want to know is how it works with video. One good thing about all these primes I've got, they're very similar shape. I mean, in fact, I think they use the same filter thread throughout yeah. the range. Yeah. Uh, apparently they've got a similar kind of balance. It's quite nice. Same, you know, you can just share the same filters for all of them, which is nice. So apparently like different, different weight, different length, but then the balance is the same, so you can change them on the gimbal yeah. without have to rebalance. You know what? Who needs gimbals anyway? 
Let's go to let's go to video. Of course, it won't give you gimbal-like smoothness for real, but it really isn't far off. And even though I'm not doing ninja-like footsteps, I can say that the IS makes the handheld video footage look so smooth. I'm not going to try and work out whether you're getting 200% better. That's just some fancy marketing talk and the active IS which they've brought in with the S5 too. It's not a mode that can be selected on, it just means it's really damn good and there's no cropping in to make it this smooth. You'll barely see the stabilization fighting those different axes of movements. It does have e-stabilization too which is cropped but why bother when it looks this good without? Let's follow a subject. Oh. It's, it picks up on a lot of bodies here, that's for sure. It's just going crazy. You can use the joystick to switch between them, just I, to go left and right. I've got an Atomos. Oh, oh, how did that suddenly appear? Wow. Full size HDMI. Yes, full size HDMI, no, no piddly little one. That's a big plus. And then you can press this button here, and then it brings it up, and you can switch off. Okay, display detecting subject. You can change it. You don't have to go into the menu system. And then you press up to switch it off. AF detection on, press up again. Okay, display detecting subject. You can change it. You don't have to go into the menu system. And then you press up to switch it off. AF detection on, press up again. I've got a ninja on just to, just to show you human body boxes in the switch see like that it's probably very challenging for the camera when there's so many human bodies in the frame but even when their human form is really far away from the camera it still picks up on them it's really good with picking up though just that those human bodies in that sea of sea of people right there it feels like i still have to customize it a bit AF Sense TV, what, what are you on? I've got AF Sense TV 1, minus 1, AF Speed 5. <laughs> I'm the opposite, I, I, I want it slower. Okay. I'm minus 2 and sensitive plus 2 speed. Okay, I'm going to try your setting now. On the first day at least it felt like we wanted to tweak the AF settings a little bit just to get AF working in exactly how we'd want it to. For some reason I think the face and eye be behaving worse than the S5 for now maybe because it's a first um, because I have been using this combo for, for quite a while the S5 and the 24 to 60 millimeters so the face eye work much better on the S5 yeah much better than this but the thing is it's still focused it's just not recognizing the face and eye but then it's still focus better than the S5 for one day that I use today. <laughs> this 20 to 60 millimeters, before that, when, whenever I cause, we've done that before, you, you allow something and I'm like, yeah! And I <laughs> yeah. do that, and then it's it loosened. totally lost, lost focus. But now it's, when I'm doing it, it lost focus a bit. But when I, when I stop, it's left back to focus. I think it's the lens, it's just really not power focused. Focal, yeah. Power focus. Power focal. Fa power focal. For sure, the S5 II focus is quicker at sorting itself out, following moving subjects, and generally just staying locked on to that subject much better than the S5. Usually when there's a, a bright background like that with lights, tree leaves, a little bit bright and lots of contrast, it kind of distracts the camera from the main subject and it does this kind of pulsing thing. Sometimes it focuses on the background. The looks of this, I mean, you did put a camera in front of you there and then it did try to focus on the camera. There's focus on the camera again. My slow focus on the camera because it can't detect a face. But then I can try. Yeah, that, that was on you. Yeah, it doesn't work with face masks, but my S5 works really good with face masks. Loud on the camera. I mean, but now when I choose change it to human detect, then it detects you. Let me, let me try changing it from your setting to something else. I'm trying to get it to not 
get too distracted by your camera. I don't want it to just suddenly see a camera in front of it and then it focuses on that. That's better. Yeah, I think that's that's pretty good setting there. But hold on, the caveat there is that we weren't running final firmware, it was 0.74 at that time in Tokyo. Personally, I felt like it was mainly just the first day where I had some issues with the focusing not waking up. I had no problems with the reliability of the AF system, it picked up on the subjects easily and quickly, and it locked on. And wouldn't get distracted by things like background elements and start doing that pulsing thing that you'd see with the S5. And I really can't replicate that problem with sleepy autofocus. But the good thing is testing time wasn't just limited to Tokyo time. Thankfully Panasonic said, keep hold of the camera, take it home, and boom voila, one week later they said, we've got the final firmware. So I did a few more tests at home. If you want the S5 II to focus on the human subject behind the thing that they're holding right in front of them, you can either choose human detection or face and eye AF. On any of the focusing modes or speed or sensitivity settings on the S5 II, the focus doesn't get distracted by something moving across the front of the subject. So that's a good thing, you don't want the focus to suddenly shift when all of a sudden the subject can't be seen momentarily. But when it comes to having a more permanent fixture in the foreground, like say a camera, with the face detection the focus will stay locked on on your subject until pretty much half the face is covered. With the human detection, it does pick up on the face and eye, but the thing is, I was finding that whatever I was holding my hands, even before it encroaches my face space, it will think, mm, you know what, I might need to focus on that instead of the face. So perhaps the answer is just stick on face and IF and just wave whatever you're holding your hand all over the frame and it doesn't matter because it will stay focused on that face. Yeah, unless you're wearing a mask. When the subject puts their face at a 45 degree angle, it just loses the face and eye altogether. So what happens when the camera thinks that there isn't a face or eye to focus on? It focuses on whatever's in the foreground. The camera. But look, none of us plan to wear a face mask for the rest of our lives. Touch wood. Overall, I'm really pleased with the focusing system on the S5 II. I'm not gonna make a big bold statement and say this is the best continuous autofocus for video on the market. It isn't. Is the focus quick enough and reliable? Yes, and it works well as a hybrid camera. And that's something I couldn't have said about the S5. Just to make this one really long video, I've got one more quite surprising test. What we've got here, we've got the S5 II, obviously, because this is a video about the S5 II, but we've got the adapter, which we haven't mentioned before, the MC21. It's a Sigma, isn't it? Sigma MC21. Sounds like somebody who is very good with a microphone and wrapping it, but this is for adapting EF lenses to the L mount, which, if you look here, we've got a 50mm f1.2 L. One of my favorite lenses ever. But let me get behind the counter because I want to test the focusing abilities on this continuous autofocus. And from what I can see, that looks pretty marvelous. Spiffing, look at that. And this is an f1.2. So the depth of field is so shallow, it's razor thin. The speed and accuracy is good. And we forget Lumix lenses, just use all your old EF lenses. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, bear in mind that this is third party lens. Let's try another lens. So we have got a 24, 1.4. I can just take the lens off like that. Don't know why I'm whispering. Look at that bokeh. I'll just spin it around here. Oh, sorry, that's your foot. So we got two, we got two boxes here. That's brilliant. It is, isn't it? And it looks great. This is the best thing I've seen today. And I'm inside a camera shop. That's mental. Canon will be happy. Yeah, Canon, <laughs> Canon will, will be well chuffed because Panasonic have just released a 2,000 pound camera with full-size HDMI. You know, good video features, and now, face detection autofocus. The thing is, I have to keep checking the screen. You know, Panasonic cameras, I've used quite a few of them, and sometimes they haven't been entirely accurate. <laughs> so I'm a little bit nervous about the focus, but I don't need to be. 
you know, do the typical auto-focusing test that people usually do, you know. Ah! Oh. One these. Oh, he's focusing on my hand there. Wow. Fantastic. Are you gonna get one, Dan? Hmm. Even your even your accent Simo is nodding. Look at that. It's saying yes. <laughs> it wants something. <laughs> it's going, yeah. <laughs> Which bit is it? It's the bottom, I think it's the bit underneath. There. Here we are. Got look at that. But look at that, this, we've got the 85 1.2, which is another favourite of the EF lens lineup. Sorry Panasonic to, to be doing this. This is probably like sacrilege to you guys, isn't it? It focuses. 1.2. When it pulls focus. It's nice and smooth. It doesn't do that kind of sudden bam in focus. I have got very good light on my face. Let's try it when I'm pointing into, you know, slightly not so good light. Here we are. Will the arm support it? No, it won't. Okay, it's gonna do that. I have to do the, the twerking while I wanna move maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> Dan has. <laughs> Dan found that so funny he just got COVID. <laughs> I mean, the light is not even on my face, but it's working treat. <sighs> That's awesome, isn't it? Okay. To be fair. Okay. To be fair, that yeah. thing will do it in there, right? What? Oh look, an R5C. That's only been out for about five minutes. Somebody's thought, eh, no, I don't want it. <laughs> because you know what, when you buy this, you realize actually the C70 is by far a better camera. But anyway, look at that. Yes, this will do it, of course. But look, this is, this is used 3990. I mean, it's a similar concept. It's a mirrorless camera, hybrid camera, although this one, the hybridness, it takes like a few seconds be to switch from video to stills. It is 8K though. Yeah, okay, 8K. But look at the price. Used, twice the price of that. It's got a fan, so is that. Focus. I mean, that doesn't even have a full size HDMI. Let's make a, you know, let's make a video camera. Let's make a camera dedicated to video, sort of. You know, it's a hybrid, technically, but it's more video orientated. It's got a C on the front. Let's put some more HDMI on it. Look, even this guy, <laughs> they put an adapter on it. They've seen the light. And obviously they must have done that and thought, you know what, I'll just get a C70. Let's sell it to Aperture. Let's put, let's put it to the back, because nobody's going to buy it anyway. Let's cover it up. <laughs> <laughs> so? I might buy it. Well, there you are. You know it's there. If I put it to the back, then nobody else will buy it. And then you'll buy it. But look, you should buy this instead. It's a very attractive proposition. Look, I mean, if you're starting out in video, say you've got £2,000 to spend, what are you going to get? You can, you can either get this, or you can get an FX30 smaller sensor, or a uh, XH2S smaller sensor again. Okay, they might have a little bit less rolling shutter, but this is brilliant, and it's full frame, and the colours are fantastic. Who would have thought? 85 1.2, and it does all right. Okay, now it's struggling. Okay, let's get rid of the EF lenses. Let's go back to, get away from third party. It's funny calling the Canon third party. Um, go from third party to first party. Their own, very own lenses is a 51.8. You know, one thing that I like about these primes, the, you know, the 1.8 lenses from Panasonic, they're all the same filter thread. This arm shouldn't be too tired now. Oh, okay, it's pooped out. It's maxed out on the NG. That's fine. That's fine. I should record that, shouldn't I? 
Okay, there you are, it's working. Despite light in the background, it plays havoc with the 85 1.2. So there, there is obviously some kind of limitation, but maybe that's just the 85 1.2 because it's such a fat piece of glass, it takes forever to shift that glass. Now, this is not the ideal position for the camera. It seems like the, the arm prefers this. It's, it's like when Locke is vlogging, <laughs> and sometimes he's like that. And eventually he's like that. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's good. It's very good. <laughs> and with the face detection, it's even better. When you put the native lens on, you do see the limitation of putting adapter on with the third party lens. Because now it's really sticky and it recognizes the face throughout. I mean, when I'm, even when I'm doing this, it realizes, it, it knows where the eye is. I mean, I think before the S5, it didn't seem to have any problems recognizing where the humans, the faces and the eyes are. It's just that the focus didn't kind of keep up with it. But here, the focus is keeping up from what I can see. Let's try it in the bad light. Because sometimes what it is, sometimes how it worked before, sometimes the S5 worked all right, and then it gets distracted by some bright, attractive thing in the background. I don't know, this kind of pulsing thing. You go, oh, oh, there's something interesting in the background. Oh, look at that, oh, look at that. Oh, now I'm gonna go back to the main subject. Seemingly no such problem. I mean, if Panasonic had fixed this, surely now, the world is their oyster, right? Because they can do video good in terms of features. Colors look great. Really, all that was lacking before was autofocus. Sorted. One more thing, the price, 2,199 euros, 1,999 dollars, 1,999 pounds. But one more, one more thing, the S5 II X. Yes, that's a big surprise. Essentially the same, but it will cost 2,499 euros, 2,199 dollars, 2,299 pounds, and you get ProRes and RAW, but external, in the same body with blacked out writing. Or you could just stick with a bargain S5 II and use a Sharpie. Your choice.